Oh guys, so yesterday I did the padding on the ball there. I'm not happy with it, if I'm honest. It has not done the job because when I'm punching it, even when I'm not going full power, I'm still shaking the light fittings on the other side of the wall. It's quite a thick wall, as you can see. Proper, you know, it's a proper weight bearing wall. So it's a bit, uh, bit one of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've just asked uh, someone I know who's sort of in the building trade if they know a carpenter who will come and sort of basically create a wooden box over here. Um, uh, much like we've got over the fuse boxes and that um, just so that when the bagging packs into what's behind it which will hopefully as I say be kind of like a wooden box roughly so so uh, big um, that the force will be dissipated through the wood rather than directly into the brickwork and that should do the job I'm hoping this morning uh, my uh, bike has arrived so don't worry it didn't arrive like this I've uh, opened the box um, and I thought hang on a minute I should show you guys what it looks like at the beginning so this is the box the bike in uh, the main frame of the bike is here okay and down the sides we've got a few of the bits and pieces along with these boxes here that were inside that big box that you've just seen I'm just organizing it all trying to look for an instruction manual uh, can't find one so that'd be interesting trying to put this together there's quite a few parts <laughs> if there isn't one I'm sure there is one in there somewhere but you never know I mean it, you know it's one of those uh, but there will be one in there and the model of the bike as promised I was going to tell you is a Spirit Fitness CU800 bike um, and it, it, it's, it's designed to take someone of considerable weight um, can take a weight, body weight of up to 450 pounds I think it is if I remember correctly so this is a big boy bike <laughs> um, so I've got plenty of growing space with it with no worries whatsoever so all's good um, that's what I'm going to be doing now. Um, it's a little late. It's already about three o'clock. Um, so I don't think I'm going to get a workout in today because um, I just had to move a sofa and take it apart to get it through a door and then reassemble it. You know, taking off the feet and taking off the door handle and stuff like that to get it in. Um, so uh, that was quite difficult. Um, but uh, so I've done that and I'm about to do this. So I'm, I'm probably going to be pretty fatigued by the time I've done this, but I want to get it over and done with. Um, so we can sort the rubbish out um, hopefully before tomorrow morning uh, when the bin men come but the only other thing that I've got then is I suppose is to do some dumbbells maybe tonight maybe do some arms um, my left knee is hurting don't know if I hurt it a little bit doing uh, cleans the other day or, I don't think so I think it's just one of those little niggles so my, uh, my left knee is a bit, ugh, a bit iffy so um, what I've got to do is rest that up. I can't squat at the moment. I don't think it'll be a little risky. Maybe tomorrow or the day after. I've just got to clear that space up as well because that's where the bike's going to go. So I've just got like, you know, one of those builder's buckets. I've just been keeping some tools in. Got some shelving there which can go into the shed. Uh, and then just some training kit that can be moved around and about. What I'll do is then, I thought instead of taking that there and building it here, because um, it's arrived on a pallet as well, by the way, it's quite heavy. There's a lot of weight to this bike. Um, but what I'll do is instead of building it here in a relatively confined space, so just in front of the bar, I'll, for, I'll build it here where I've got all my, my benches and stuff to sit on and, and seats and, st and tool, easy access to my tools. And what I'll do is I'll just wheel it across, uh, move the deadlift uh, pads out of the way, wheel it across, move this slightly out of the way, wheel it across or even through, through here um, to where it needs to go. Because um, there will be wheels attached to this. If not, it's going to be bloody hard to pick up. Um, so uh, there we go. Uh, that's it for now. I'll show you in a. It'll be a few seconds for you guys, but for me, uh, probably a couple of hours again. Another couple of hour job um, doing this up. I, I mean, who knows? I mean, I haven't, as I say, got into it, so it might only take me about an hour. I'm hoping for an hour, but probably two. And, um, if things uh, are a little bit more complicated uh, than I hope for. Right, see you in a second. All right, guys. So as I was always told in rugby, uh, when I used to play for Mosley Rugby Club, uh, prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. So that's exactly what I've done. I've done this with every single thing I've built in here, um, uh, and in, in my other home gym before I moved. Everything you see here that's been built, I do this every time. I arrange all the pieces. Uh, display them clearly um, and um, present them in a way that is 
easy and logical for me to follow when I'm assembling. I empty every box and if I have to, I'll even count all the screws and the, the bolts and the nuts and the washers and all that and make sure they're all in the right order because just spending even just 20 minutes before you start organizing everything um, can just make the difference between making a mistake and, and really messing up your equipment and creating something that will last for life. Um, at least that's the OCD in me telling me <laughs> the logic behind what I do. Anyway, it's something that I like to do. I always organize my pieces and set up a nice working area where I can sit down and do things comfortably. Um, and as a result, I have found the instructions manual. It was hidden deep in one of the boxes. Um, so, uh, and I've had a quick flick through there. So I'm prepared for every stage. I know ex roughly where everything's going off the top of my head, but I'm to refer to that now. Um, but I'll have that open obviously on the correct page when I'm doing my bits and pieces. Um, overall, basically what I do got to do is I've got to build this mast up here which then has the control panel and the H HUD um, that you kind of work with here. And then the handlebars also here. Um, most of that is from there. Obviously I've got to attach the seat onto there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's all it's black on black. Um, and then I've got to attach the pedals. So it's not massively complicated. There is a computer wire in here that I've got to find. Um, yeah, I can kind of just about see where it is. Yeah, there it is. So I've got a computer wire there that I've got to drag out to connect to the uh, control panel uh, so that it can you know, do things like measuring your heart rate and doing the programming of your workouts. Um, but beyond that, that's, gonna, that's the only slightly technical thing. Um, everything else is just spanners and screwdrivers, good old fashioned, honest, hard work. So um, I don't think it will take me too long. I think it will take between an hour and an hour and a half to um, build this now that everything's out um, if I'm lucky maybe 45 minutes so I'm going to shut down until the end uh, or unless I see something crucial to tell you um, and then I'll uh, I'll be back in a few seconds hopefully uh, to show you the finished product all right bye-bye all right guys so um, there's a couple of bits in the assembly instructions for the bike that um, basically don't cover a couple of the things that you need to do. Um, so I'm just going to cover just a couple of those easy little bits. Uh, they're relatively self-explanatory, but you know, you might get a little stumped and it saves you making mistakes um, and busting your equipment or you know damaging it or just wasting your time basically. Um, so uh, basically the first bit I'm gonna cover are the foot straps. Um, everything else I've assembled, um, but I just want to assemble this side with you so you can see actually how easy it is, but it's actually very easy to make a mistake on this and get it the wrong way around and things like this. So each strap is, is, uh, has on it the side that it is. So this is the right side, and then obviously there's the left side over there. And if you get confused which one's the right or left, you know, maybe you take it from behind or in front. The pedals that you install, they also have it, um, the, the corresponding side also. So this is the right side and obviously left over there. Okay, now what you do is you take whichever hole you want. If you've got bigger feet like me, you want to go for the end hole. If you've got smaller feet, you want to go for the inside hole. Okay, um, it doesn't really matter because you can change the um, thickness of the, of essentially the foot um, strap um, by uh, this little mechanism here, which I'll show you once this is connected, okay? But all you've got to do is there's a little hook on the inside of your foot pedal, um, and it's a double hook, double-sided hook in essence, and what you do is you just get whichever hole you want on the hook, and essentially you've got to do a little bit of brute force. So just bear with me as I try and get this on. It's a little awkward. Once you caught it though, it's that that difficult so you just got to catch it on and once it catches you just tug and tug and tug don't worry you're not going to break these straps they are very very tough you then fold it over and as you see on this side there is a sort of serrated almost edge um there you go yeah and that goes into this little mechanism here which then essentially acts like a like a, like a filter and you just press that down to release it to loosen it or take it off and so you, you don't have to press it down or in to put it in. You just literally slot the rubber into there and push it through and then it catches and you've got your foot strap. 
Right, the other bit, which I've already assembled, was the seat. It just says, stick the seat on, basically. Um, put it on the uh, the tracker. Now, the tracker's under here, okay? And you can loosen that and basically bring the seat forwards and backwards by sliding it along here, okay? That bit's the easy bit, okay? Uh, and everything's easy on here. It's just sometimes a little confusing. So if I just get some more light so you can see. In here, you have, um, when they say just stick it on, um, you don't just stick it on, there is a hex bolt. Um, oh, I can't do this with hand. Right, there is a hex bolt, which is there. Uh, where's my finger? There it is. There's a hex bolt here, and it's on the same on the other side as well. Now this is already bolted on, um, and what you're going to need to do is get a spanner and put it around the hex, okay? And the spanners that they provide you with the kit are not sized for this, okay? So you need to have your own little spanner collection. You put it on and you just tighten it up, okay? If you don't, what will happen is when you sit on here, the seat will actually collapse, okay? Um, this will stay upright, but this will just go forwards um, and uh, uh, you'll fall off it, okay? Um, so you wanna tighten that up as m almost as much as possible, but just leave a little bit of give in there. And the reason I say that is so that you can turn this from side to side to some degree. So you can make sure, because it's a little hard to judge whether it's centered or not, I find. So having a little bit of give in it allows you to change it uh, before going on uh, every workout, just to make sure that it's dead on center. Now you don't have to do that. In fact, I would recommend if you, you can line it up perfectly, um, then I would tighten that on as hard as it goes. Um, just so there's no give, um, especially if you're a heavier person, there's no give that's going to sort of make the seat move inappropriately whilst you're on it. The last sort of fiddly and awkward bit was this part here. So behind here, we have all of the uh, wires that connect this all the way down into here and into uh, the dynamo, okay, that powers this system here, because this is not plugged in, you power it with your own uh, sort of exercise, okay? Um, and even though bringing the wires up through the mast is very easy and connecting it into here, into the console, is relatively easy, um, maybe a little fiddly, nothing too bad. Um, attaching the metal at the back here, and this second piece of metal, it's actually two pieces of metal. So you have a, a sheet piece of metal here that goes all the way up to the top, including here, um, that's flat, and that's relatively easy to attach because you're just bolting these two here, but then you've got a second curved piece of metal here. Um, and it's very, um, so we say, uh, it's not very specific in the instruction manual as to how to orientate that piece of metal. Um, but what you want to have is, as I've got here, and you, as you can see there, see that curve at the bottom? See how it's bent? You want the bend going inwards. Now, the way they've drawn it on the instruction manual, it makes you think that you've got to have the metal kind of pointing outwards. So basically the other way around to this. So this, in theory, would be upside down the way they've drawn it, but it's not. You want to put that in there like that to protect and cover the wires, otherwise they'd be billowing out here and they could always get caught and damaged. Um, so that's the only thing. And to get that in is very difficult because you have to put screw, use a screwdriver. Um, and if you want to use your screwdriver through here, very difficult to actually get the angle. In fact, it's impossible to get the angle right. So you actually have to put it in first, make sure it's all lined up, tighten it by hand just enough so the bolt doesn't come out, and then get your screwdriver, and then, then normally you can put it in. But you can't do that unless you do these bolts first. Okay, so these bottom bolts, um, these bottom bolts need to come in first, and they, Normally what I would do, like most people, is you put every bolt in loosely to start off with to make sure everything aligns correctly. Um, no, not on this. On this particular part of the machine, you want to put these two in as tight as they go so that then this is 
positioned where it needs to be and to be honest it's quite a tight fit in here so it can't really be poorly orientated um, and then then you can just about do this but as you can see my hands are very kind of big and chunky and getting them into this tiny little space to twist this and arrange that is very difficult especially as it's very hard to see whether you're fully aligned or not um, other than that guys this was relatively easy to put together it would have taken me half an hour to put together but because of this awkward bit because well that that didn't slow me down uh, and the chair uh, just working out the couple of little bits that they don't tell you about I don't know if they did that on purpose just to, as an IQ test um, um, it took me into the about half an hour more like 50 minutes just slowed me down a little bit just because of the fiddliness so now I'm going to pan out and show you the finished product so this is the Spirit Fitness um, uh, C-Series and the model number is the CU800. Um, and it looks like a real good piece of kit. I mean, it's very heavy. The hardest bit about putting this together, other than the fiddly bits, is actually just getting it out of the box. It's, it weighs quite a bit. It's a very heavy piece of kit. So getting it out is the difficult bit. And starting it off, there is a bar that you need to attach. Where was it? It was at the back here that you need to, oh uh, no, sorry, it was at the front. You need to attach the bar. No, it was at the back. I'm sorry. It's because I've covered it up. These are guards. These don't um, come attached. So the black guards go over the pieces of metal that you add on the bottom. Um, and essentially what you do is you attach them. Um, and until you attach them, essentially this is resting on the ground and it needs to be about a couple of inches off for you to be able to put this metal in. So what I did is I rested uh, uh, what essentially was the, the tracker of the seat upon my shoulder, lifted it up, and I had to kind of carry the machine on my shoulder whilst I was kind of fiddling down here, attaching things. But once that's attached, everything moves very, very quickly until you kind of reach the bits that I've just mentioned that are a little bit confusing because simply they don't explain them or don't even mention them. Um, now I'm just going to show you how this is powered so you power it with your with your feet and you can see this is turned on by itself because i've i'm just turning the pedal here okay and you can see how it it measures everything and you can change your programs and everything like that so um it's wonderful not to have to plug this in makes it a bit more versatile because it is a heavy piece of kit you do not want to be moving this thing around very much um so uh, which is exactly what i've got to do now i've got to take this uh from here um, and move it over here but there's no space at the moment so I've got to clear some space and put it in front of my racket in essence next to the fan for when it gets hot one of the nice things about this uh, thing though and I'll do this in a review once I've used it is there is fans inbuilt into the machine which you can turn on and off and I assume you can change the power here okay so there is a fan coming out anyway to help cool you down this is you know if you're living in america or another hot country like that that's going to uh, be it's worth its weight in gold and that seat's not on straight again <laughs> that's why i've left it loose just so i can change it because i'm a bit ocd when it comes to that um and once i'm convinced it's on 100 percent straight i will uh, lock that on tightly right um, that's it for now guys I'm just going to move that over I might show you just me just using it briefly um, but other than that guys see you later bye bye